Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky. We are going to be talking about some really ridiculous Warhammer 40k stuff today. But before we do, if you enjoyed today's episode of the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where if you support us on Patreon, you can get access to our Discord, uh, some behind-the-scenes stuff, bloopers if they happen, and uh, some really... Really nice HD poster. So, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Uh, Bricky, where can these fine folks find some real top-tier quality merch? DK, I gotta say, today I'm really excited for this episode. Like, oh. I'm, I'm really, really, really excited for this episode because, well, a lot of reasons. The topic is a big part of it, naturally. Naturally. Um, there's a big part of that. Uh, there's some, yeah, I'm really excited to discuss this. We got a whole lot going on, but also I got great news. The dice are back in stock. Let's go. The dice are finally back in stock. And this time we have a lot. A now lot. I, I want to, I want to uh, make a couple of statements real quick before we get too deep into it. Um, okay. the reason they took so long is because I had to change the people I was working with for the dice. Um, because the last people were not fun to work with and so I had to change it up redo it, all kind of crap And so this new dice are a bit different material. Uh, I like the color and the pips better uh, But they are a bit lighter as well and normally when you feel lighter you generally assume like lesser quality naturally oh, right, you right. know um, and I think, I think like it's kind of a side grade personally, but I can kind of see the argument for maybe them a little bit less. So because of that, the dice across the board have been discounted 20% to make up for it. Ooh, let's um, go. That's not like a deal. Like before it was 10 for 20, 25 for 35 and 50 for 50. Uh -huh. Now it's 10 for 15, 25 for 27, 50 and 50 for 40. Uh, oh, okay, cool. The, the first one being uh, the amount of dice, so 10 yeah. to 15 bucks, you know, that kind of thing. So oh, that's, that's, that's a good deal. Um, so it's been, they've all been discounted by 20%. Uh, got plenty of dice, though. I still think they look great. I love them. I literally played a game, my first game of Night Lords yesterday. Oh, how'd it go? Uh, well, I fought Tau and they lost badly. <gasps> Ooh, ooh, like you lost badly because Tau railguns and yikes. Oh, the railguns aren't out yet. Oh. Oh, no, no, okay. no, this, no, this is old trash tier towel. Ah, okay. So you yes. dominated. Good work. I Good did. Work. I did very well. Yes. With the Adeptus. That's why you won. You were using those sick Adeptus Ridiculous dice. The, the dice felt good. They were, you know, the lightness was actually nice when I had to roll a lot of them. They they felt good in the hands. I like them. So pick up some dice. Check them out. Orchidate.com or look in the description for some dice. Also, I'm not done yet. We also oh. have a deal going on. So oh. not only have they been discounted, but also if you buy some dice, it doesn't matter which quantity, and one of our merch things, so a shirt or a hoodie, you get 15% off your entire order, and that's Ooh. for the, the rest of January. Let's go! So, dice are back. If you buy dice and shirt or hoodie or whatever, you get 15% off the whole order. Okay, I'm good. Don't need to talk about the don't need to talk about what? the book club Let's because book club. we don't need to talk about the book club. Oh, we don't need to talk about the book. Why not, Bricky? Because today is Necron Supremacy Day. Necron Supremacy, let's Necron go! Necron Supremacy, hail to the infinite empire. <laughs> um so me so I was recommended right so much the Twice Dead King Ruin. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Which just went on pre-order sale for the next um, sequel, Twice Dead King Reign, um, for I think it's 40 bucks. I actually already pre-ordered the collector's edition of the hardback, because I wanted to. And um, I think you can actually get the audiobook on Black Library uh, right now for like 40 bucks, which I don't know how much audiobooks normally cost. That seems a little steep, but- That I mean, does seem were... steep. That seems a little little much. Although I'm, I just buy them on Audible and they, I just, I have a credit. Do it. Yeah, they're like 20 bucks, I think, per credit, so. Uh, whatever it is, um, mm -hmm. so a little steep, but you can't get it now games workshop. Don't say I never did anything for you um, <laughs> But as I was reading the book, I was like this is pretty good and then I was like this is really good Like whoa, this is really fucking good mm -hmm. So much so that I didn't even want to do a book club episode because it was so good that I wanted to do a full episode and 
because we actually learn a lot about the Necrons in this yeah. book. And so it kind of is like a continuation, like, hey guys, look at all this new stuff we just learned about in the book. So we're doing an Ultix episode instead. Um, and I think, with the exception of the, the, the Night Lords trilogy, I think this is my favorite 40K book. I, I would definitely agree. Um, definitely better than the infinite and the divine, which um, is, oh, I, I think the infinite divine has a better ending. Um, but it's really hard to top that ending. Yeah. I mean, it does have a better ending, but to be fair, twice dead King is looking like it's going to be at least a trilogy. So technically we don't know what the actual ending of twice dead King is yet. Infinite divine is like, like. It has like a nine and a half out of ten ending, and twice that is like a nine out of ten ending. It's still. I, really I was gonna good. say the <laughs> ending was really, really good. Also, uh, I, I no no spoilers or nothing. The Necrons have a pulse, a weapon called a pulse, and that shit sounds so busted. Like what the fuck? So so <laughs> yeah yes so so naturally we will be spoiling this book. Um, if you don't care, you don't care about Necrons or whatever, mm. I mean, you're honestly missing out. I, I would recommend reading this book. Yeah. Um, but regardless, we will be spoiling at least this first part of the book. And if at any point it sounds great, maybe you should go re read it or listen to it because it's really good. And also, it's done by um, Richard Reed, who also voiced the Infinite Divine. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty great work there. And it was also made by Nate Crowley. Which, okay. which is the writer, which I'm not quite sure what else he has done. Um, not either. Well, apparently he has a book called Gaz Kothraka, Prophet of the Wa, coming out this year. Oh, shit. We have to do that. Oh, my. Oh, shit. I don't think Shy's going to let us miss that, right? Looking, She's like, Look. <laughs> looking respectfully emoji. <laughs> we have to. That's a, that's a no-brainer. Uh, I'm, gonna, he's... I'm gonna get to brush up on my orc voice. But anywho, uh, Twice Dead King Ruin mm -hmm. is the story of Ultix, O L T I X, I believe is how it's uh, spelt. No um, idea. I only listened to it. I thought it was like U L L T I X. For I could never tell. Time. I think it's O L T I X. Sure, um, that works. Ultix of the, I I literally already forgot what kind of dynasty he was from. It's a sub dynasty. Uh, yeah. It wasn't the most important part. It wasn't. Um, of the entire book. But basically, Ultix is an exile. Yes. Um, he did something, he did some bad things, which got him to be stripped of his, because he was like a lord or like an overlord. Mm -hmm. And he was then stripped of his silver necrodermis. And so he's, instead of having like a silver thing, he looks kind of like, like a, like a onyx color, like a, like a, yeah, dark like almost stone yeah like a black metal yeah uh kind of color in stem and he was basically sent to go watch over some backwater ass world in their dynasty yep seda seda uh and that and that's kind of where it starts off and i, I would really roll with with calling this book this book is a tragedy oh a hundred percent like this not is, just this being is sad. shakespearean tragedy uh, levels of like oof very little Hamlet-y, I feel. Um, oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, because it's not just tragedy, as in this is a sad book. It is, it is a tragedy. It is the fall of an empire. It is the the fall of like a house of like a family. Um, yeah. It is truly a tragedy, and this and this is probably the reason why I like it is because f this book is fucking depressing. <laughs> oh, absolutely! It's really, really sad. Um, I think the book, I, I almost want to say the book made me feel almost the same levels of, like, disappointment and sadness that, like, Ultix had. Like, when he returns home, what you're expecting, like, the way Ultix is preparing for it and what you actually get are, sh they couldn't be any more different. And it's like, oh my god, what the fuck happened? Um, so yeah. yeah, it's it's really interesting seeing the dynamic there. But there's a couple of things I I really wanted to touch on that we learned about in in terms of like the Necron tier world, sure. because in this the whole point of this book is that 
Well, oh, okay. So the, the plot line is that he's fighting off some backwater world and trying to deal with orcs. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing about Ultix is that he's got a bunch of sub mines. The best. The best idea ever. Um, so base, <laughs> I always imagine them a lot like the AIs they give you in the new Halo game, where they're like little various uh, yeah. like sh geometrical shapes with two little eyes on them. And I'm imagining like little <laughs> balls, like like doctrinal is like a little ball but with a tie on or something and then like and then like uh xenology has like the is like the emo they're all emojis right and then he's got these are the nerd glasses emoji yeah and then and then um combat i don't think ever speaks it like growls and Grunts barks and like growls. a dog yeah. Yeah. so it's just the, like the angry face emoji mm -hmm. and so it's it's five it's doctrinal strategic mm -hmm. um xenology mm -hmm. combat and is it logistics I think, or yeah, sure. I think it's a logistical submind. Mm -hmm. And so there are five versions of himself dedicated to various tasks at hand. Mm -hmm. um, so if he ever needs to like, if he ever needs like, hey, I'm fighting orcs. What is this thing that Xenology is doing? Um, and so yeah, he basically allows him to talk to himself. And so Xenology yeah. will be like, uh, so, like, uh, oh, my lord and master, they are doing what is called a wah. <laughs> wah. Wah. It yep. is, like, he the xenology has its own little, like, he hates the unclean, but he needs to know about them. Mm -hmm. And doctrinal hates xenology, so they have, like, a little rivalry. It is, like, this little, like, warring... Yeah. Also, uh, Ultix is on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> He can he, just mute the party. <laughs> he, he can mute the party, but he also has his his uh, partition, yep. which is literally just his notification center. <laughs> and so, like, Doctrinal keeps on, like, like sending him Pinging pings. Him. Yeah. yeah. He's like, hey, 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 hey. And he's like, shut up, Doctrinal. Stop it. I, I love the fact that the submines actually rival with each other. I think that's actually, like, a really cool idea that there are literally parts of himself that are just at, at odds with each other. Um, so I, 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 I thought that was a nice little touch where they, they, they start feuding and they just start bickering back and forth and all the guys be like, everybody shut up. It's just me talking. Everybody shut the fuck up. I like how combat is literally a dog where whenever he's, yeah. he's in a situation that he might be in danger, <laughs> combat just starts growling. He's like, I want to fight. <laughs> um, so well, actually speaking of the hating on each other. So let's talk about the most important reveal that has come from this book. Okay. Saying the word poop is punishable by death. <laughs> That's that is I'm true. not I am not and, and ironically I say this, uh, no pun intended, I am not shitting you. <laughs> <laughs> you could get killed in the Necron tier for saying that, bud. If you use the the actual word for excrement, which would be like excrement or feces or whatever the Necron tier refer to as waste. Yeah, it is punishable by death in the Necron world yep. because the the concept of biology is so like anathema and so gross to them. Yep. So, shy. What, what is that? What is that, shy? and Stimpy. What is that? Fuck is that, shy? Oh god, that's a gif. I don't. Oh, oh no. That has to be from like uh, one of the Ren and Stimpies that was a uh, more recent. Shy, what the fuck is that? Yeah, you, where do you where do you get this shit from, Shy? <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> what the hell? Oh my. Okay. Um, All right. Back on track. Oh my god. Back on track with the shit talk. So, uh, one time. So there was a part in which they were lo noticing a Necron ship flying overhead. And they scanned it, and what they found was that there was plumbing on the ship because it was a it was a stolen ship, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the plumbing was full of waste, and Xenology was like, "There is um, uh, and I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry." Yeah, he has like, to apologize before saying he's like, "Look, uh, you know, doctrinals, you know, you guys might want to like uh, turn yourselves off for what I'm about to say, because uh, there's 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 
you know, he, he, there's, he, there's waste he, in there. I think he says like excrement or he says like, he says some word for he, it, right? He says the Necron word for waste, which I think was like crud or carud or something like that. Oh but yeah. yeah, but it, it wasn't the Necron word. It was two slangs down. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the funny right, part. Right, Instead right, of right. it being excrement or poop, he said like waste. Yeah. And then immediately after saying that, all the other partitions were like fucking furious. They wanted the, to the delete him for even saying. Yeah, that. Doc Trina was going through deletion protocols. <laughs> yeah. He was like trying to ban him from the server. <laughs> he He's was. like, How do, do I have mod privileges on this helm? You heathen scum. It was so funny. So I guess that, yeah, because they, they despise, because they're very like regal. Any, mm -hmm. any kind of weight, like in the beginning of the, of the book, Literally one grot making his way not even to the sanctum of his tomb, but to yep. the steps of the tomb yep. is like his failure. Yep. He, to the he point where he, he needs to kill his war, royal warden for his failure because yeah. a grot stepped on a stair. Yep. Which, by the way, Neth, the voicing for Neth was absolutely incredible. Yes. Um, uh, Praetor Neth, the general, who's a little fidgety yeah his uh his brain is full of holes unfortunately. yep and so he's constantly talking like like a like a rebooting computer i would yep. do yeah he's did you just little... did you just ooh woo me dk ooh <laughs> yes. yep i yes sir yes sir runs through sub mines to ban dk from the <laughs> server <laughs> I just lost my silver necrodermis. Damn it. Mm -hmm. Um, but so like in the cause in the beginning that happens, and then I think the grot like hawks a loogie on his on his foot. <laughs> yes, and he does. just gets fucking furious. And then he, he just steps on the grot's face and pumps it yep. into a paste. Yep. Which then gets more on his body. He's like, ah oh! Son of a bitch, you which goddamn I think he, orcs! I think he overheats to like burn off the the excrement. Yeah, they do that later in the book too. Uh, yeah, they like they heat their their core up and they just all the yeah. on the outside. So the there's like interesting reveals throughout the thing, uh, throughout the entirety of the the book. For example, uh, the main story revolves around three major characters. I guess four possibly. Um, you have Ultix, and then you have his mentor, which was named Juceras, which actually starts with a D. Really. It's like D J E R A S or something, huh? Yeah, it's anyway. it, it's weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's the equivalent to his brother. If ne yeah, well, yeah, no, he is his brother, right? That was the kind of the reveal at the end, so to speak. Oh, I thought uh, that was known the whole way through. Well, he was his mentor, or or I guess it was his uh, his senior or whatever. But I don't think we necessarily. I don't know if we were told he was his brother in the beginning. I, th I thought it was one of those things where he was his mentor and therefore, uh, or what was his superior or whatever, but I thought it originally it meant like the person who would teach him as opposed to actually being his legitimate older brother. Oh, okay. No, I, I might be wrong on that one. Uh, and then there was Unas, who was the king of the of the dynasty, I think, or the... Um, yep. Or, or I think he was the he pharaoh. He was the dynast. The, the, the dynast. The dynast, yes. yeah. Uh, which... I think it was a reveal that it was his father later on. Hmm. For some reason, I always kind of got the vibe that uh, even if they didn't explicitly say it, it's just whenever all of them interacted, it just kind of seemed that way. So maybe I just uh, jumped the gun on the reveal. We have a buddy at Dice Check who also read the book, and he didn't. And even though he read the whole thing, when I said that Jaceres was his brother, he was surprised. So <laughs> he lost that one. Um, Yikes. <laughs> well, 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 uh, well. I he may have glossed over it. It was, it was oh, fine. Okay. Okay. Um, the point being is that I, I thought it was a reveal later on, but I I could be wrong. But um, and then uh, what was the name of the cryptek again? Um, oh, Mentep. Mentep, the cryptek Mentep, the en engromancer. Uh, and then there's a couple of side characters. Um, who was the uh the famed blade of Seda? Ah, Yenik. The Yenik. Razor of Seda. The Razor of Seda. And then my favorite character was Lysychor, ah, the uh the, the Death Watch. The, no, the de no, Death Watch is um, Or not Death Watch, you death know. What death I Mark. Mean. The death, death Mark. Mark. I was close. The the Death Mark who woke up before all of his others <laughs> and then decided to kill them all. 
and then as punishment for doing so was then uh sentenced to never hold a position of power again yep. and so he calls himself the the baron i think he's a nemesaur but he calls himself a baron because he likes it yep and so he's constantly talking in like ulta six brain with using his own voice <laughs> and he's and also like what what the fuck like Psycho cut it out and he's just like, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> he's got such a creepy voice too. It's yeah, really he like, like steps out of his pocket and... dimension and he's like, I could just assassinate you if you want. <laughs> yeah, it's he's he's creepy. He's very cool, but very he, creepy. He's very cool. Um yeah. so the idea is that the story goes, they're fighting this orc wall, and old six is kind of is is really pissed the fuck off. Because <laughs> yeah. Jaceris, his brother, betrayed him. Unas, the Dinas, cast him out. You know, he's like, fuck you, dad. You know, fuck my family. I hate everybody. Yeah, they're all assholes. They all betrayed me. No one stood up for me. Jaceris was my mentor. He told me to always have my back. He didn't even stand up for me. What the fuck, man? And uh, and so, as time goes, they're dealing with, like, an orc, orc invasion. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, he kind of... Oh, he has this part where... So they they do a very like they go full space Egypt in here. Yeah. Um the idea is that Ultix is trying to find a new way of war, fight more tactically, fight more um pragmatically. So instead of the classic Necron way which is phalanxes of warriors going marching forward, you know. Uh for example, he was going to lose the battle against the orcs and he was like, "Nah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm not supposed to let people touch the stairs." Fuck it. I'll let them all into my tomb and they get to enjoy a very Egyptian style of traps and hidden caverns and doors yep. and spikes and gunpoint viewpoints out of the walls. And yep. He just leads them into a kill zone and they have no chance. Even if they get by the traps, they're all set up to just hammer them. I like um, how I like how an orc makes it really deep. And he's like talking to the orc and he's like, what do you think your kind's going to do? And he keeps like stabbing him with his staff. He's like, what are you going to do? Stab, stab. Like, you think you can beat me? Stab, stab. Stab, stab. Like, he's like just poking him. Spit on him. And he's like, the orc is like screaming. And like, he's like screaming. He's like, oh, shit. Poke, poke, poke. He's like poking a bug. And then didn't he get the idea to do that from the medium? Because he had the... Yes. So he has another submine type thing. Yeah. Where he has the, the medium where he can go back to any point in time, even the time of flesh, mm -hmm. and review a memory. The problem is that like a dream, the memory will slowly fade away and he'll be lost without it forever. Yep. And he has so... to sort of translate what that dream means before he completely loses it and can't decipher the lesson that was to be learned from it. The idea is like, I don't know what to do in this situation. Let me try to pull a memory and that might help me. Yeah. Um, so he pulled a memory really early on in the time of flesh. Which was uh, very interesting. Which was very interesting. So the idea, so, so here's a bunch of shit that we learned about. So we always knew that Necrons had space cancer. Yeah. Um, so I guess as a Necron, back in the day of the Necron tier, they still made things out of like wood brick, wood like uh, mud bricks. Mm -hmm. uh, so like all the the commoners would have mud brick houses. They go full fucking space Egyptian, you know. Yeah, um, they, they really had do. they had like wine and all that kind of thing. But every morning as a Necron, you would wake up and you'd feel throughout your entire body. And you'd feel every part of your body for any lump or hard piece of mass. Yep. Uh, which is when the sickness has started. Yep. Uh, that was and, the, that was the common cause of death on uh, for the Necron tears because their sun is so fucking um, big or uh, whatever. I think it ir irradiated. Yeah. Yeah. It irradiates the shit out of the planet, and by and large, if you were a Necron tier, you were probably gonna die of like radiation poisoning or. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't quite make sense because they actually were star faring at that point. They just, they just, I guess, didn't. I don't know. Leave. No, no, it's my just... home. I'm sentimental. Whatever. Well, they were they were star fairy. They just uh, they just kept on having the cancer. I don't know why, but even in like other areas with better stars, they still had it. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah um. But even if you were like a super high ranking noble like Ultix, you would be able to stave off the cancer for 
two years max. Oof, boy. And if you were a lesser, <laughs> like a lesser person, you had maybe a couple months. Yeah. Um, so death became a big part of the Necron tier. Like he, he was being served wine by one of the servants. And the servant was so far down his cancer, half of his face was a hardened, like, scar mass. Uh, yeah. Like like a stroke victim, where it just wouldn't move. Yep. That, oh. Yeah, that's that's rough. Um, And so, you know, he kind of looks back at it, and the lesson he learned was like, oh, the power of the Necron tear is in the stones. Yep. You know, it's like, oh, okay, so I'll, I'll bring them into the pyramid and all this stuff. But yep. if you like flayed ones... Read Ooh. this fucking book. Oh boy, the f oh, the the God. the curse. Yep. So so interestingly enough, they had a theory. So it's a theory of why the Necron uh, the Flayed One curse exists, mm -hmm. um, where there was a Catan Star God, and it was the only Star God to ever be fully obliterated, because Star Ooh. Gods can't die. Yeah. They can because they're gods. They can break into a thousand pieces in which they will then be put into Tesseract vaults and used as Pokemon by the Silent King. Of course. Um, of course. For your drip throne. Exactly. Like at the spoilers for the Infinite Divine, at the end of that, they fight four to five shards of the Deceiver. Imagine if they had literally all the Deceiver shards at the end of that book. Good God. Well, well he would have the Deceiver and he would, he would annihilate the galaxy. Yep, he sure would. Um, but so uh, the idea is that this star god actually died. He was the only star god to ever be fully obliterated. And his last, like, and on his death, he cursed the Necron tier with the curse. The curse. Which is the, the flayed one curse, which is the insatiable want to eat flesh. And the slowly going crazy as you can't eat it. Because you shove it into your face and it just drips onto your body. Yep. I mean, you're a Necron. You can't eat. You, you don't really have a mouth. You just have a sort but of it, an etched on thing. You, it's, you, have a, you have like a death mask. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's treated like an addiction. Oh, it's yeah. start Because the curse doesn't just hit you. It starts slow. Mm -hmm. You slowly get this want to eat flesh. Yeah. And then you may be like, oh, just, just a taste just to try it. And that was the problem with Yennick, the razor of Seta. The razor, yep. When they finally found him, he had like blood on his face because he was eating an orc and he was like, oh my God, don't look at me, don't look at me. I'm yeah. like, I'm so fucking ashamed of myself. Like I've gone, I've been reduced to so little. Yeah, well originally, um, Ultix was trying to uh, convince Yennick to actually come down to Seta and help him because he was going to lure the war boss into the tomb and it was going to be like, oh, look at this. Look at this war boss. Look at him. I bet I bet the Razor of Seta would want to come down here and show this war boss what for, huh? Huh? And he's like, Yannick? Hello? Knock, Are knock. you there? Hello? Anyone home? Hello? Yannick? Are, Are you, you up there? Yennick, Razor of Seda, come on, buddy. You're really good at this shit. And he just... My call answer. is very important to you. Yeah, he just, he ghosts him. And so, uh, Ultex has to kill this war boss on his own. And then he's furious that Yennick is nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found. And he's like, oh, when I find that fucking Yennick. And, and then he finds him and he's... And he's like, oh, my, please don't look at me. Like, I'm so fucking ashamed. Yeah. I, I tried to eat this orc. Yeah. Um, like he, I didn't want to come down. He down to the planet. He got someone to get, like, one of the orc remains for him. And he was, like, trying to feast on it. And it was very... Yeah. It's really sad. It's it's literally like a drug addiction. Where yeah. he, he, need, he needs it or else he feels weak and powerless. And it's mm -hmm. actually very sad. It is. Um, he's, he's devolved to a very sort of weak and ugh, state. But after that, they have a, a, the geriatric board meeting, which is my, one of my favorite mar <laughs> moments, where it's all the leaders of this little dynasty, right? Yeah. And they're all like cryptics, and they're all angry. They're all like generals or something. Yep. And they're all old and elderly, kind of, and they all talk that way. Like, one guy was, the, was one of the dudes who would uh, manage food back in the Necrons here, so he was the grain master. <laughs> Yes. Yep. And he has a little picture of like wheat on his chest. 
<laughs> and he's and he's like, I demand respect. And it's like, yeah, grain master, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's it's also important to note that Ultix was legit going to kill Yannick. Uh, he was either going to kill Yannick or he was going to um, exile him into the tombs uh, to be with the other cursed ones, with like the flayed ones. Right. I but didn't want Men to jump. Mentep was like, no, no. Don't worry about that. We've got more important things to do, and that's what leads to the uh, board meeting. Right. I don't want to go too like deep into all the facets of the book, just because I don't want to treat this one like a book club episode. Oh, that's fair. I yeah, kind of yeah. want to like kind of actually. Yeah, yeah. We, sh we should talk about when the Flay ones arrived. Yeah. So so when so when he went to go teleport to s up to see what the fuck Yannick was up to, like Psychor was down there with him, and he's like, "Hey, should we? Hey, kid, you want you want some candy?" And oh, and then he I was like, it. "Hey, hey, Overlord <laughs> Ultix, um, we should just send the we should send the ghouls after them." Yeah. So very much like an old like pyramid, Egyptian pyramid idea. There's spirits and ghouls, and the idea is that the flayed ones actually hide in the dark recesses of the tomb. Yep. And so when he decided to call out the flayed ones to go deal with thing, everything, the remaining orcs, you heard like screeching and like the sound of razor fingers on metal in the deep dark caverns. It's like 200 flayed ones just start like waking yeah. up and they start yeah. to crawl out of the holes in the in the walls and like they start coming out of the mm -hmm. floorboards. And, and then I remember... It was interesting to see like the interaction with the flayed ones because like mm, everybody was like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna use the flayed ones? Like that's that's tantamount to heresy. Like what are you? You can't do that. That's fucked up." And that the flayed ones kind of listened to him too was well. The I flayed, ones, flayed are ones still. Were just, ugh, I didn't think they even had any. They're like auxiliary troops. Yeah. They like, um, but there was that one who was ripping up the orc war boss. <laughs> Behind him, <laughs> and 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 then like Ultix was like, oh, and he turned around, and there's a flayed one like staring at him with big white. So I guess all their eyes are are a pale white color, mm -hmm. and he's like staring at at Ultix, and he's got like a, the orc over him like a vulture, and and he makes this apparently they laugh in this click clack sound. They yeah. kind of do this like kind of sound, yep. and then he holds out this big pile of like meat to Ultix like. You want some? <laughs> yep. And then Ultix beats, beats the ever-loving shit out of this thing. He, like, rips its limbs off and then, like, st curb stomps it to death. Yeah. He's like, oh, how dare you? There is literally nothing left of this flayed one for him to destroy. And he's like, damn, I'm still not satiated. I wish there, I wish there was more of this fucker mm. that I could destroy. Whew. But, um, real quick, so that, after that whole deal, they go to the board meeting... Uh, my favorite of the whole board members is that there's one board member who keeps on shutting down, <laughs> which which is which <laughs> is for them. Asleep, yeah. He basically basically them asleep, and then he's like the master of monoliths, and so oh, he's yeah, like asleep, yeah. and he wakes up, and he's like, ah, bring out the monoliths, and then he falls asleep again. Yeah, and <laughs> he's he like mer he's monoliths. like mermaid man. Yeah, he has all the monoliths locked away, and he doesn't know where the key is. He's forgot. Yeah, he forgot the key. <laughs> uh, I really like the um, was it Baraka? The Red Destroyer. Oh, the yes. The gigantic Titan Destroyer. And I was like, oh, boy. And they so, go a little bit into his backstory, too. I was about to start into that. So oh, more, more Necron lore. More Necron um, lore. So, yeah, he was a Destroyer Lord. Yes. Um, now, I don't remember if he was the Scorpec Destroyer Lord or just a regular Destroyer Lord. But, for example, um, to show you the, the mini, actually... Uh, oh, he has a mini? Well, destroyers have some minis. This this guy may not have been like this, or he might have been. I don't remember. Okay. Um, but this is a, a Scorpec Lord. Ooh. It's a destroyer lord. Ooh, that's so dope. It's a, it's actually a really big model, too. I love that. Yeah, it's uh it's super, super dope. Actually, here's a size comparison. That's the 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 guy on the far left Whoa. is is what a Praetor Neff would have been like. Whoa! Yeah, that is a. It, it's almost like a combination between like an immortal and a or the Seraptex. Oh, um, Scorpex. Scorpex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Anyway, yeah, um, sick. so I guess so I guess if you go back to some more Necron lore, 
uh, Necrons would have sacrifices yes. to appease the gods. And it was in the beginning, it w which did the Egyptians did do that? I'm not sure, but I could I see know. the Egyptians totally sacrificing people to the gods. Yeah. I don't know my Egyptian lore very well. I'm um, going to assume they did at some point. That seems like a very Egyptian thing to do. So um, they originally would sacrifice people to appease the gods in hopes of fixing their super cancer. Yeah, the radiation. Uh, when that didn't work, they continued the sacrifices in worry that if they stopped, the gods would make it worse. Um, however, this was generally done Thanos-style by lottery. Mm -hmm. And if you just picked the wrong number, you were sacrificed. And some people wouldn't want to be sacrificed. So there was... <laughs> I wonder a, why. So there were these specific uh, jobs done by people known as Red... I think they were known as Red Marshals. Yep. Or, yeah, Red Marshals. And what they would do is they would go to your house, break your legs and arms, <laughs> and drag you out into the sun, into the heat, and then sacrifice yep. you. Um, what was the name of that of that guy again? The destroyer, uh, Baraka. I so believe. he volunteered for the job. <laughs> he was like, "I'd like to." Yeah, that down. Fun. And so he volunteered for the job, and that might be where our destroyer cult stuff comes from. Could be. It's kind of hinted a little bit that maybe these Red Marshals were the Destroyer Lords or something mm -hmm. of that nature, but we're not quite sure. Yep, and that's um, why Brock is all red. Yeah, he's got Necrotic red eyes. All red. Yep. Yeah. He is um, a motherfucker. So they look at this their threat, right? Which is they find his orcs, and they're like, "Oh, it's just some orcs." <laughs> and then they see, and then they're like, "Oh my god, that's a, a lot, lot of orcs. orcs!" And they're like, and then I think one of the guys is like, "What? Just more orcs?" And then they, they quadrupled in size. Like, yeah, it turns out just more orcs is the problem. <laughs> Your big problem. But then they like, no, no, no. This is like an entire orc planet. Why? And it's this is done so magnificently. Mm -hmm. This scene. I was on the edge of my figurative seat at this yeah. part because trying to guess what the because they, they were like yeah. oh, the orcs are like running away from something and yeah. i was like oh my god chaos? what the fuck could they be running from orcs are running from yeah. what i was like is it chaos tyranids could be tyranids could uh, be tyranids. other tyranids, necron you know? dynasty perhaps yeah. the storm yeah. lord he's been mm -hmm. mentioned once or twice mm -hmm. um could it could it be like uh some other like like a ton thing eldrick crap yeah. you know and then they they like go through the clouds and stuff and they see and it was like they see long black ships. Yep. Like oh, it's like a huge length of it. Four hundred and sixteen onyx ships. And they yep. end the chapter as they zoom in through their little like uh video of the double headed eagle yep. of and the Imperium like, of oh Man. Oh my god, the Imperium's on a crusade. It's like the Imperium is on their crusade. 416 <laughs> ships. It's a little bit of a crusade. It's a little bit of a fighting force. A bit. Yeah, it is. It is insane. Yep. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, so 416 ships and they are they are doing a, a nature so hard where they are their crusade where they are going in. And they are just they're not even trying to gun things down. They are exterminating planets on their way. To, to really kill the unclean. Were they actually exterminating planets? I, I might have missed that part where they were oh, actually. Oh, yeah. Just, Ooh -wee. Oh, yeah. They, they were like, we're not even going to bother landing. That's an I orc mean, planet down there. We're going to raise it. I mean, that that's kind of how you deal with an orc wa or massive amounts of orcs. You just exterminate planets until you don't give them anywhere to land or they run out of food and they just die out, I guess. Of all of the things I have read, it, it, it took a Necron book. To make the Imperium sound absolutely fucking terrifying. Oh god, yeah. The Imperium is horrifying and very big scary in this one. Because normally you're seeing it from the Imperium's perspective and it's like, oh, hooray for the god emperor, blah, 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 blah. But this one is like, when you're on the receiving end of an Imperium crusade, oof, ooh, nothing so, worse. <laughs> so th that kind of jump starts our story, which is like, basically... Old Sixta says, we're doomed. Yep. Like when when the necro when the geriatric necrons are 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 saying, uh, what am I 
like what are we gonna do We're like is can we do anything do we have reinforcements do we and and all the guys are just quiet like we we are literally all going to die yep but like, it, it has this sense of fatalism which when you hear when orcs are running and necrons are scared of dying. Of it's, dying. <laughs> that's a big deal. That really shows you, like, the gravity of, like, what the Imperium is capable of. Like, if they put a good chunk of their forces into it, you can't stop the Imperium. It's it's pretty nuts, like, rem we have to remind ourselves that, hey, let's not forget that Imperium can act like orcs in terms of numbers if they have to. Yep. Yep. They sure can. So that kicks off the idea. And so basically, Old Six's entire story from there is, hey, I need to partition more forces. Yeah, more reinforcements. Yep. And that's where the tragedy comes from, which I, I don't want to get maybe too far into it. I do, but I don't. Okay, um, we'll get a little bit into it. We'll get a little bit into it. Basically, he goes to partition his older brother, Jaceres, um, into getting some forces and then partition... I guess we kind of have to get into it, don't we? We kind of have to. Yeah, yeah it's all pretty right. important, yeah. So he meets his older brother, Jaceres, uh, in, like, a desert where he's cleaning, a, like, a phalanx of immortals with a teeny yep. tiny little uh, little phaser brush. Yep. And he's, like, gonna get all the little dust off. And then He's the, obsessed with getting them clean. He actually has a funny moment where uh, Mentep, the cryptic, who actually has a little pet scarab or a pet, uh, cri like wraith. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, and he's like, yeah, you know, they say a, a good way to keep our minds sane with all of our, you know, millennia lifespan uh, or whatever, or, you know, un untold lifespan is like, mm -hmm. hey, we got to find an obsession. Yeah. And then Jaceres is like, huh, then I guess Trazin of the Nihilak Empire is the most sane <laughs> out of all of us. <laughs> Yep. And I'm yep. like, ah, good old, reference. Good old Trazen. Good old reference. Trazen. Yep, yep. Um, but so he's basically out there to clean the immortals and Ultix is saying, yo, we need the reinforcements. We need to talk to Unas. We need to get some yeah. fucking stuff. And just Saris just won't do it. Nope. He you wants know, no he part just, of it. He wants no part of it. He, it's, it's very much, there is a lot of Kurosawa in this. And I and I think it's one of the reasons why I love it because despite how much I hate anime, I <laughs> love feudal Japan stuff. Oh, okay. I think I like like the fucking old school samurai Ronin uh, loyalty to the emperor, family drama, that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. I fucking love that stuff. Like, okay. Uh, the old old um, old Japanese uh, uh, what's it called um, like spiritualism like onis and yokai mm -hmm. I, I like it's it's like it's the shit that i can't ever say i like because like i thought you hated anime brick you're like shut the fuck up well there's a difference between liking anime and liking japanese uh, culture themes or samurai themes those are two completely different things are there anime that deal with japanese spiritualism and oni Sure. Oh sure, totally. But yeah, that yeah. So it, it, one does not equal the other. So you're you're but good. I get a lot of like feudal Japan vibes from this because they oh, have this sure. this sense of honor, right? This mm -hmm. massive sense of honor. And then older brother Jaceres will not. Did you play? Did you play Ghost of Shush uh, uh, Tsushima? Uh, I never finished it, but I got like halfway through, and then some other game caught my attention, and yada yada. But I fucking loved Ghost of Tsushima. Well, um, like the story. Jin Sakai is is like trying to remove his honor because honor will not beat the Mon the Mongols in this situation, right? right. Yep, he has and to it, sort of be a tricky thievy. Uh, yeah, and his uncle is like stuck in his old ways. Like, no, we need to become, we need to stay honorable because if mm -hmm. we we aren't, we're just as bad as they are. Literally, Ultix is the same thing. He's like, we need to fight differently, and and Jaceres, no, I have loyalty to the throne. I can't, I can't forsake. In I've that case, it would be this, yeah. yeah. Or in that case, in uh, would be uh, the Shogun, right? Yep. Sure and would. I will never. I can't betray the the dynast. It's yep. super like family that kind of drama. So, Jaceres is a wash. He goes over to the the big temple. Wasn't it the big temple? What planet were they on again? Isha, Isaka or uh, Ithaca or Isaka? Isaka? Ithaca? 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 I think. No, I think uh, it's Ithaca. I think it's Ithaca. 
Okay, but Jasiris gives him like a bunch of passcodes so that he can get in or some nonsense because he's still, oh, you're still my brother. Let me give you a little bit of a helping hand and it kind of yeah. pushes him in the right direction at least. I, I'm sad you missed my isekai statement. I, I heard it. Good. Good. I heard it. Good. But fuck isekais for the most part. What is that again? Uh, it's like being reborn in a new world. So like... Uh, oh, like you, Sword Art Online or whatever? Yeah, people will okay. argue that Sword Art Online isn't an isekai because he still gets access to his old body at some point. But yeah, that, that's the basic idea of it. That's all right. If someone is arguing for, for Sword Art Online, they're lost to me. Agreed. Good. Anyway, he goes to Unas and... This is where like the major tragedy kind of comes in because he enters oh the yeah. the tomb and it's like full of plants, yep, and vegetation. He's like, "What?" And little that, animals are running around. Everywhere. Yeah, it's like, that ain't right. That ain't right at all. And yep. once he's there, to to paraphrase for a bit, he finds a seraptic, which is, uh, I I actually I was shocked they actually put that in the book. Um, a seraptic heavy construct is enormous. It's a model you can run. It's a Forge World model. Yeah, I. Well, that, that's like the big kind of spider walker thing, right? Uh, pretty much. It looks yeah. like this. If that. Because I, I, I was having a hard time really um, figuring out what. Oh, okay. Um, that's basically what I thought it looked like. Okay, cool. Well, th this is how big they are. Uh, this is an Imperial Knight to its left. Whoa! They're that big? They're in, well, this is, I mean, the scale on, in tabletop is a little different, I'm assuming, but they're, they are enormous. It's, it's, it's bigger than a, it's really, whoa! The like, seraptic I, I, constructs are gigantic. Like, I got that it was big, but I, I didn't realize the scale of it. Like, I thought it was, like, maybe, I mean, like, again, big. But Jesus Christ, although it was shaking the ground, wasn't it? it? It was literally, so it turned into a walking flesh thing where it had a bunch of spikes on its back with impaled humans and orcs and shit. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a cult. So so the, the oh. dynasty has fallen to the flare virus. That's the concept. It, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. been rotted from the inside out. Yeah. And so the cult is like following this giant, like a, like a communal food thing. Yeah. And it would shake sometimes, and meat would fall off, and all of these um, nobles, yep. yeah, these like crazed nobles would start trying to eat the meat, and they would start chanting and shit. Oh my god, the chants were so fucking creepy. Yeah, they they were constantly chanting, get louder and louder and louder. Yeah. And um, then there were like flayed ones in the garden, like kind of staring at old six, like, hey, yeah, I, see you you. I see you. <laughs> yeah. Um. What, Richard Reed was the voice that did the audiobook? He yeah, did, poor, poor Richard. He did so well with this part. Like, it really, like, the chanting really added to, like, super uneasy, creepy vibes. Yeah, he just had to keep on, like, upping it with time, and I'm like, oh, this probably hurts your voice. Oh, God, yeah. Um, but either, uh, regardless, with that whole, that whole shtick, once he gets into the main center chamber... He finds Unas, and Unas is completely insane. Oh yes, he's he's completely fallen to the curse. There is essentially nothing left of the Unas that he used to know. Yeah, he's completely mentally just out of it. He's he's eating meat. He doesn't remember anything. He's he's basically a dementia patient. Yeah, which is super sad. If you've ever like dealt with someone that had dementia, this is so. And what ha what? Cause um. Um, Hemian is there too, and he's sort of just using that sort of dementia against him to sort of suggest things to Yeah, they, they have like an interloper character, basically, and he's yeah. like he's pretending to be Jaceras. Yep, and, and having dealt with like dementia in my family, it was like, oh god, you could totally confuse and just totally uh, convince someone like that to just do whatever and that whatever you wanted to be reality to them would like they'd go for it and it's just like oh god that's that's sad that's constantly the worst feeling is like it's 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 like someone who's really rich with dementia and, and like the the maid or someone is like convincing them that's like or like like a like yeah. one of the uh, the brothers that have been cast out by the family yep um it's yeah it's it's really it's, it's really fucked. super tragic um, yeah but long story short uh old gets gets like tries to attack him gets stuck in like his field and gets captured and then is uh swiftly dissected 
and um, his yep. sub mines all get uh, are able to find their way into a little scarab. Yeah, so they get into a scarab, so they get sort of freedom. Yeah, so like all five sub mines are now one entity, and they're in like a little scarab. Um, so the the con so paraphrasing a lot, he does some gladiatorial fights, uh, really weakened, but then the scarab on his back is like slowly rebuilding his living metal. Yeah. Um, and he eventually makes his way up. I think he he gets his way through or whatever. Um, the interloper has a great death, where they turn on his pain receptors and then throw him into the ring with all of the fucking um humans Gladiators. and orcs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. pretty good. Um, but. That whole thing is just Saris arrives and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking fool. But during that part down at the bottom when he's going through his medium, we got to talk about the Disparact. Oh, the Disparact. The, I, I was completely unaware that this was something that the Necrons were afflicted by. Um, and I guess it would only be the nobles because they're the only ones who kept their minds. Yeah, they're the only ones that would remember or maybe have any chance of remembering what it was like to ever have flesh. Yeah, so so the disparact is literally I have no mouth and I must scream. It's the idea that a noble or like a lord still remembers everything, and so and therefore they have the issues of being a robot. Yep. So you know, Ultix might start to freak out, or he might get scared by something. He'll start to breathe heavily, but then he's like, I can't breathe. I have no lungs. And yeah. then that leads to, I, I don't I, I, he reaches for his throat to scratch at his throat. Like, I have no throat. My mouth isn't mo it's just moving. Metal. Oh my god! Like, and then he like my, he starts to freak out, so his heart starts beating faster. He's like, I don't have a heart. Yep. And and then he start, and it keeps on going and going and going, and then eventually he might just go insane. Yeah. It. I. I. So I am fortunate that I have never had a panic attack before, but that's kind of what that sounds like. This sort of like existential crisis this sort of panic attack about what you are and what you've become and and just this fever pitch that you get into and it's just like oh my god like i <laughs> i don't i don't know if that's what a panic attack is actually like but if i had to imagine what one was like it, it that seems like a pretty apt uh, description of it that's what shy is saying too i i've i've only i've been blessed to only have a couple in my life like two to three and that's about what it's like Okay. It, it's it's very it's like a snowball effect, right? Right. It really just keeps on building and building, and mm -hmm. so there's a decent idea where I guess the the like the Necron will try to regain feelings of flesh, and if, and if you get lost to it, you'll like wail and scream and cry for eternity because you'll never be able to fix yourself. So you become like a fetal position, like a mess. Yeah. For a lot of the book, I thought they were going to be like, oh, yeah, the disfrac is actually like the beginnings of the flare virus because you're going to be reaching for your skin and you're going to be going crazy because you can never do it. And to sort of replace that, you would try to consume flesh. I thought they were going to try and play at that, but that's I don't I don't think that's the idea. No, um, not quite. Yeah. Um, but but the, it's still definitely something that's very interesting and spooky. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, More that so Necron lore. That's just like, whoa, OK. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah, it's it's really it's really interesting. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, uh, though at that point, they actually he because in order to stave off the disparate or disparate, he basically needs to go into the medium a lot in order to um, kind of get his mind at ease. But he goes back to the times of flesh a couple of times, um, and he also goes back to why it, it reveals why he was cast out. Uh, where Unas was slowly, I think I think he was slowly being affected, um, yeah, but Unas, as, as his father, was just a bad leader, and he wasn't yeah. doing good things for the dynasty, and so Ultix tried to kill him. Yep. And for the betterment of the dynasty. For the betterment of the dynasty, and so uh, Jaceri, so this whole idea, he had this feeling of like Unas was a piece of shit. Old uh, Jaceri is a piece of shit, but in reality. Just Sarah saw he was going to try to kill Ult, uh, Unas, and he was like, don't do it. Don't do it. And then eventually when he tried, just Sarah blocked him and said, ah, he, uh, you know, he he tried to, like, uh, kill me or something in a squabble we've been having for a while now. Uh, we should not have him be executed. We should instead just exile him. Yep. And Unas is like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure, I guess that works. You so, disappointment. In a sense, Jacera saved his life. Yeah. By making up some bullshit. 
Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like, oh, wait a minute. Never mind. I was wrong. It's like Jasiris was a really good mentor slash brother the entire time. Yeah. And then the last thing. Even when he landed, he didn't shoot him down and he sent him along his way in the right direction. The last thing I thought was really interesting was he went back to the time. Uh, he went back to the memory of him actually going into the biotransference for uh, tra biotransference furnaces, mm. which was super interesting. Yeah. So I guess what happened is the Silent King decreed. Oh, was it also where we get my Nemesaur Zandra cameo? <laughs> Before that, a little bit where he's yeah. like, Zand. I guess the all the warring factions. The Silent King says, "Hey, no more war." No more war. Not allowed to. Nope. And yeah, so yeah. Zandrek comes by to help associate the peace. And he's like messing with them. He's like, ah, your Unis guy might be kind of an amateur if he's having an extra Y. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He slaps back. And yeah. Jaceris is like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> You're such a bastard. Uh, he, he Oberyn's like there a, too. Yeah. He's, he's, he seems he's like a, a nice guy. sort of like, uh, he almost seemed drunk. He's the nice old like man who, who has no man. filter. Yeah, definitely. And and Oberyn is with him. He's like this e hulking, enormous like bodyguard. <laughs> and every time uh, Zandrick would make a joke, old, uh, uh, Oberyn would just kind of shake his head like, God damn it. <sighs> this is what I have to deal with. It's so it's really funny. But anyway, probably the best reveal is the is the whole biotransference thing where the Silent King also decreed all um, food production be halted. Mm -hmm. because of no longer needing it and so there were literally giant green furnaces enormous furnaces yep. placed on the planet and above the furnaces were spectral katan floating like wisps in the air yeah looking like they were eating but they wouldn't know they how would they know that their souls are actually getting yeah. eaten and um, uh, and they were and oh, this is actually about a year after Oltix felt his first tumors. Oh, that's right. Because he, what did he say? If he wasn't a noble, he would have been brought there on. I didn't know they brought people in on sick carts. Like they had the worst, like, and they were just pushing them in on sick carts because they were hoping that they could outrun death and get them into the furnace quick enough. Some were starving die. because of yeah. the, the the no more food. Yeah, and, it really yeah. paints a, a much more um, desperate picture of the biotransference. Because, like, in my head, I always picture them just, like, kind of single-file line. Just Everybody's kind of just waiting to go into biotransference and become Necrons. But, like, some of them were super fucking desperate to, like, because they were about to die. They were literally like, oh, my God, pushing... I got to get in, I got to get in, I got to get in. They were literally pushing, like, sons and daughters on yeah. giant sick carts into like like into long lines of people waiting mm -hmm. to enter because they were like we can finally we could literally outrun death yeah not knowing that these commoners these these regular people were literally going to become necron warriors which are brainless soulless yep. have no fa well we we know don't think they have faculties yeah that was a question earlier is that jaceris doesn't know he's wondering like they don't have any brain function it seems like but how do I know that they're not in there, mm -hmm. like somewhere, just scree to... like screaming? Yeah, and but they yeah, do not painted, realize it. It painted a much more desperate picture of biotransference than I thought. It should have made sense because obviously you're trying trying to cheat death, but it painted such a more grim, dark desperation for biotransference than I had ever thought the Necrons were capable so, of. Or some yeah. people didn't outrun death. There were there yeah. were there were bodies, like tons of piles of dead on the sides of the lines. Yeah, they just they were literally there in the line for their biotransference, and they just didn't get there in time. Oh, and then and then right very depressing. Right <laughs> before, before Ultix is about to do it himself, he feels a metal hand on his shoulder, and it's mm. just Saris, and he's like, "It's not so bad." not so bad that was the name of the chapter i think right it's not so bad something like that and then he Oof. wakes up from the medium and he's and like ultix starts screaming bef yep. trying to back up and run away from the furnace before he quote makes the worst mistake of his entire existence oh man it's it's really depressing and it's, i'm like that's yeah. why i'm like 10 out of 10 best 10 book, out best of 10 book. <laughs> It is, if you're a Necron fan, why, you really, these are books you need to read. This is like a must read. 
Necron, the Necron books and lore has probably been handled the best I've seen out of any any faction as of lately. Agreed. Um, so continuing, um, basically at this point, you know, Unes, Jaceris, he, he gets, Ultix gets back, he's better. Jaceris comes back and he's kind of like, I'm, I already knew, I just couldn't bring myself to deal with him. I'm sorry. Yep. Because um, his honor, he, he would not betray his king. He refused. Um, and at this point, the, the, the Imperium has arrived. Yeah. And oh my God, have they arrived. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Like they're sending in penal legions and yep. bombing areas and they're dropping in blood angels. Blood angels. Man, when that when that space ring came out, uh and and everybody the, all the space marines are chanting a star days. Um yeah. and they're like, Oh yeah, there's a blood red drip. I was like, I know that chapter! You I know, know it! I know this one! Let's go! He wanna he wanna know something that makes me upset. What? This is gonna make every Necron player so upset. Oh. So, so they they go on out, and as soon as they go out, like there are planes and drop pods flying into the atmosphere, yep. and, and Jaceris is just like the the most the manliest man. Oh, ever. absolutely! He chads he, it up. He's a perfect general because he got a giant force field over the tomb world, right? Mm -hmm. And so drop or like um, drop pods and like uh, landing craft are coming in, and he's just grabbing them, like putting his hand up and like grabbing them, like he's got the fucking force, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and he's crushing them or holding them still for the goss pylons to shoot. Mm -hmm. He's sending in phalanxes of warriors. He's like holding back missiles, yep. and eventually, uh, an Astartes vessel does like run in and they fire like was like magma bombs yeah like I... thermonuclear warheads in yeah um but the big thing before that is they hear the ground start to shake and in the mm -hmm. way corner of they in the ridge they see uh a titan legion of warhounds or whatever yep they sure and, do and so Jaceris is like <laughs> ultix do you remember the Tachyon Arrow that you were given <laughs> however long ago, right? Yep. And he's like, uh, yeah, you get one shot. It's a noble's weapon. And you can like, never and, reload it. And what did you do with that arrow, Ultix? He's like, I, I missed. I missed. I was shooting <laughs> I a transport and I missed. Damn it. And, and then I, I forget what he says, but he's just saying, like, remember uh, something about, like, Oh, yeah, he uh, was like, oh, yeah, I have one more lesson for you. And he's like, oh, remember the Tachyon arrow that you missed with? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, here's the lesson. And then he, he, he raises his arm and he shoots the fucking Titan. So the Tachyon arrow in game, 120 inch range, strength Ooh. 12, AP minus Ooh. 5, D6 damage, can only oh. shoot once per battle. Right. That's that weapon. Yep. And that thing... One shot a titan. <laughs> D6 damage my ass. He he's just like, I have one lesson for you. Ping! And he fires a sliver of metal going at like triple the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And it just a warhound titan just fucking gets ex just explodes. Yep. Just crumbles. And I'm like, D6 damage! <laughs> Suck my <Jeez>. ass! <laughs> The lesson is patience. The lesson is patience. Ping! <laughs> of course, he only gets the one shot, but... Yep. But still, um, it's a good, that's, a, that's a good thing to take down if you if you only get one shot. Taking out a fucking Warhound Titan? Huh. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's a nice shot. That's a very nice shot. Uh, so, after that, basically, Jaceres, like, stops those two thermonuclear warheads, but he, like, kind of burns himself out in the process. Yeah. Um, and so the big final stand is when Jaceres like repairs himself a bit, turns off his re re resurrection protocol, and then pulls out like what two hundred immortals, something and like that. Yeah, let's say three hundred because this is this is gonna be sort it. of that three hundred last stand. He pulls yeah. out three hundred of them. Let's go, and then he he literally like. He like pulls out his purple overlord blade and like rips the hole in through the dimension and then all of his his personal bodyguard of immortals come out. And then he like slams his staff on the ground and they all light up gold. Oh, it's so cool. This is Be like the best part. Because he wasn't cleaning them. Nope. He was inscribing their deeds onto their bodies in hopes that at least somebody 
will remember what they've done despite being soulless robots. Yep, because he always felt guilty about it. He always felt guilty about not respecting the citizenry more and killing them. Mm -hmm. uh. And and is and they're all just like they glow gold with this like almost like tribal tattoo heraldry on their mm -hmm. bodies. And then just like there, he marches in. Um, and then we don't see him again. Ultix goes back to the thing, uh, the big pyramid. He finds Unas, uh, and then all like the Lich Guard. Yeah, he finds um, Unas in his like secret uh, ship. Yeah, or like like yeah, something like that. And then he basically um, uh, Unas is still crazy, and yeah. so he's just kind of like, all right, I'm gonna kill Unas, and he because the Lich Guard kind of let him. They're like, yeah. nah, just do it. Like we know there's a problem. Yeah. Um, and he and he kills Unas. That's the saddest part there is because when he kills his father. All of the Lich Guard transfer their protocol yep. to him. Which means that Jasiris has fallen. Because it would have been his older brother first. Yep, Jasiris was next in line, but since everything transferred to Ultix, his brother has fallen. His brother has Imperium died. Imperium has killed Jasiris, yep. Um, and so he eventually leaves, and they uh, he goes onto the... What's the giant, like, dreadnought ship they have? Like, the g enormous, oh, like, carrier? Yeah, it's like the Acrop... Pose? The, so, like, yeah, like the Acropos like, or whatever. Ship. It's Yennick's yeah. like gigantic ship. Yeah, the Admiral Yennick, and he's like just just going to town. Um, and the 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 book basically ends with them, uh, well, fighting an Imperial vessel, and then <laughs> pretending to be pretending to be uh, turned off one, and then they fire chains. They fire the Ursa Claws. The Ursa Claws. <laughs> I love the Necrons' reaction. They're chains. Actual. Like, Chains. Not a tractor cannon. They're no. using chains. Chains. Actual chains. <laughs> it's and then they basically like and then they decide to fire out the a condensed star from a it, dimension and is, they pulse it. Yeah, is that a thing they actually do? Is that like is is that canon that they they like they had a pocket well, it, dimension that had a star in it? DK, if it's in a book, it's canon. Like, holy shit, like, they can, the Necron can actually have pocket dimension, but just like, oh, yeah, we need to supernova a star at close proximity to absolutely decimate our enemies. Do it! Like, I didn't realize that was a thing! Like, they did it. That's they, so busted! They, 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 well, they fucked up the ship, but they didn't actually kill the ship. It was because it's just like a pulse, remember? The ship survived. It's just, like, super fucked yeah. up. But they um, destroyed the planet. The planet no, is dead. They did not necessarily destroy the planet. They, they set, soaked it in magma. They set the atmosphere on fire. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they didn't destroy the planet. Only the yeah. atmosphere is on fire and everybody on the planet is dead. And it's all ruined and it's charred ash everywhere. But the Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yep. The planet's not totally dead. You're right. Sorry. The star pulse generator. Jeez. And then and then they leave and that's literally the end of the book. They yeah. just end it. And now the new one's out and go read it. Oh, I can't wait for the new one. I can't wait to see where they go from this cuz he's on a ship with like, oh, that's right cuz there's the Exodus that has all of their uh, uh artifacts and stuff. So they got to figure out what the fuck to do with that cuz now Ultix is the last remnants of their uh dynasty. Also, can I say there's a part earlier when Ultix is hiding in like the foliage and there's some blood angel guys there and one of them is damaged. And yeah. they're like uh, trying to trying to get through there, mm -hmm. um, and a, a flayed one s sneaks oh. up behind the fucking blood angel, and he like yeah. stands like a foot taller than the blood angel because he's been all contorted, him, and he looks at Ultix with like wide eyes through the grass, and he puts up one of and his jaw distends really wide, yep. and he puts up one long talon to his mouth like shh. Oh, that's right. I, I I genuinely forgot about that. But yeah, that's... God, the flayed ones are so creepy. They're so creepy. They're so creepy. Like, they would make for a great horror shooter type thing. Oh, my God. They're so fucking creepy. Anyway, so, but yeah, that's that's essentially a, a Twice Dead King. That's essentially right. Twice Dead. It is... Uh, so it, good. It's really, really good. It's It's a total tragedy. Mm -hmm. It's super sad, but it's also incredibly, incredibly good. Yeah. Um, so learning much good a lot Necron of, lore, yeah. So much new Necron lore. So much intrigue. So much more humanity put into them. Mm 
Oh, it's so good. The disfract is fucking terrifying. It makes me want to start flayed ones. <laughs> yeah. You should do it. Start a flayed ones army. I already have well, a bunch of flayed ones. I, I was gonna say you you have a Necron army. You just need to add some some more flayed ones. It makes me want to be able to run a character death mark. I want to run the Baron. Could you? Is there a way you could? No, like, death marks no. are just a sniper choice. You don't get. To, uh, there's no. Uh, ooh. Yeah, I'm sad. Ooh. So are we are we gonna do the next book? Is it technically out? Are we gonna wait for it to come out on Audible before we do it? Or man, fuck it. Yeah, we're doing twice dead King Rain. Let's, Let's do Rain. Go. Let's do Rain. I might fuck have to it. buy it on Black Library, but that's okay. Yeah, it's alright. I'll probably do the same. Yeah. You're lucky your shit's so good, GW. <laughs> now buff the tachyon arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you buff that tachyon. If, if it can one shot a titan in this book, it should one shot a titan in the game. Or at least should be more than D6 damage. It shouldn't <laughs> allow me to roll a 1. <laughs> 3 D6. Uh, 4, d three 4 D3. <laughs> 4 D3, sure. It's only one shot. Come on, I have to pay yeah. points for that bastard. You only get it once per game. You fuck it, who cares? Uh, and uh, Necrons need better anti-tank anyway. But, um, anything else we should mention beforehand? Because we, we skipped over a lot, but there was so much to talk about. Yeah, if we talked about every little thing in the book, this would be like a four-hour episode. Really But I would. think we hit on most of the important points. Um... God, it's such a good fucking book, man. It really is. Go go read it. To get the full force of it, go read it. Because obviously you can't get everything from us in an yeah. hour and five, ten minutes. Uh, so uh, go read it. It's really, really, really good. Even if you know nothing about Warhammer, I think you'd still get a lot out of this book in terms of Necron lore, how scary the Imperium are, and a little little orc. Two 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 two, two uh, requests from for our for our chat. Uh one we gotta find someone make an Ultix conversion. Hell um, yeah. And Fuck yeah. And two, all right, chat and viewers, listen here. Well, imagine Ultix, but all of his submines are actually anime girls. Oh my god, are you serious? We're doing anime waifus for Ultix's submines? Let's Ima imagine, go. imagine Let's all all go. five all five of the submines. Are, are various anime oh. girls. You got Doctrinal, who's like a Sidere one. Xenology's a nerd. Combat's the tomboy one. Come on now. I'm I just like saying. I'm like just it. saying the chat, viewers, normally I don't ask for this shit, but it's just cursed enough. Bricky is asking for anime waifus. It's... Somebody has to make this shit happen, and I'm a giant weeb. Listen, and... I'm just saying it's oh. it's ve it's... I like it because it's cursed. Apparently, Shy says that Ultix is literally a new model. He's not named, but he is very clearly based on the character. Oh, well, that, that they remade the Overlord model back when the Necrons got an update. And that's when they added the Tachyon Arrow to the game. So I, oh. so he, Ultix is basically just a regular Overlord with a Tachyon and Phase Glaive. Uh, mm -hmm. But painted a different color, and his helmet looks a little different. And I bet you could spice him up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sick. Five submind waifus. I am here for it. Good. Uh, I'm... If you can make them legally distinct, could we put that shit on a shirt? Oh, shit. Because I would buy that in a... I'll take your entire stock. Twice dead harem. Yes! Let's go! Oh, no. Let's go! I think I've made a mistake. You sure have, and now you're going to pay for it. You uh, Now, per, this is your Disferak. I, ha <laughs> I have no hentai, and I must scream. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's like anime waifus. Instead of like this brooding shadow telling you that you don't have skin, it's like waifus that are like, you like anime. No, no, the brooding shadow is literally <laughs> just someone saying your your uh, anime isn't real. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No, the darkness is taking me. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> All right. All right, we're out of here. I'm All done right. with this shit. Yeah, Buy the new shit. dice!